Hey guys, Natalie here. And I want to actually share with you something that some of you might not know about me. And I realize it's because it's such a part of me that I don't talk about it a lot, but it's such a deep part of me. So, and that is yoga. So I own a beautiful yoga studio called Love Yoga Flow. I've actually owned it for about the last five years. And I started teaching yoga seven years ago. And the reason why I actually came to teach yoga was because, and yes, you're in the middle of my kitchen right now, is because I went through a really huge transition. It was the end of a relationship that at that point in time it meant a lot to me. I was questioning a lot. And I knew, I knew that I was on the cusp of really a key point in my life because I wasn't married. I didn't have kids. Really, at the end of the day, I only had me to answer to and me to also, you know, kind of risk and put on the line. And I knew it was time to go for it. And so what I did was at the age of 30, I went back home. I moved into the house I grew up in, in a small town with my parents. And I, so I moved in, right, living with my parents at the age of 30. I was like, I'm going to start my business. I'm not going back to corporate America. I'm starting my business with no investors, no capital, $25,000 in debt, living at home in this small town that was about an hour away from actually where I had been living and where I was starting my business, which was this larger metropolitan area. And I did that. I did that for a year. And well, actually, I've been doing it ever since, except now, you know, none of those, none of those conditions are still the same. But my point of that, though, is those, you know, that was my life for a year. I was commuting to teach. I was, you know, renting space. I was, you know, ho you know, hosting and marketing for yoga classes and no one would come. And honestly, it sucked. It was one of the most trying, challenging things that I had ever done in my life. And why did I keep doing it? Meaning, you know, it was, tr it was trying because like, here I am passionate about getting the, the message of yoga out, which seven years ago was just on the cusp of being popular. It wasn't like how it is today where there's like a yoga studio, you know, on every corner across from every Starbucks on every corner. And, you know, and it's because I knew I heard a call in my soul. And when you get that call and you know that the only thing that you have to do is answer that call then you do whatever it takes, even when you get resistance. And yes, of course, I got resistance from the people around me. You know, I got, you know, you're in debt. You're not making any money. When will this change? You don't have any clients. And I kept going back to, I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I heard it. I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And some of you might be like, well, what did you hear? And it was actually one day in meditation that I, because I'm very visual and very intuitive, and I, I got this download, and what I did is I actually saw Jesus standing in front of me, and he was breathing love into me, because I was very upset during this point, in this transition right before I had started teaching, and what I heard in my mind was, teach yoga like this, and how I interpreted it was really emphasizing the aspect of love and really emphasizing the heart centeredness. Once again, this is right on the cusp before these things became buzzwords and, and, you know, kind of in more mainstream, like people really weren't talking about being heart centered and intentions and love. They kind of were, but it was really more of like an East and West coast thing, you know, and I'm out here in the Midwest and, you know, and I heard that and I was like, I'm getting this for a reason. I can't ignore this. And I knew that if I ignored it, I would actually probably end up like sick or depressed or miserable because you can't ignore what your soul came here on earth to do. You can't. And, or if you do, there's a heavy price to pay and I was not willing to pay that price. And so, you know, and so I, I, you know, for a year did what I, you know, just told you guys a few minutes ago with the commute and, and the challenge and, and just feeling that struggle because damn, it was a struggle. And then after about a year, something just shifted and I, you know, end up, you know, having all these clients, you know, come in and from there it slowly took off, but it was really about two, two years into it before you know i went from renting a studio to having a studio or renting space or rather to having a studio so it was two years of this and i will share with you guys 
one of my biggest, biggest gifts that at the time it seemed like a gift, but it was. I never had that cushy six figure job to go back to where the boss was awesome, the coworkers were awesome, and the pay was awesome, and I was living it up. You know, even though I was a computer degree, believe it or not, uh, you know, back at OSU, because I went to the Ohio State University, post college, for some reason, I have no idea why, but for some reason, I chose like these shitty odd jobs. Like I, I worked in the insurance restoration industry and I worked at a tea shop and these aren't necessarily bad jobs, but they definitely were not my soul's calling and they definitely honestly had their downsides, you know, could have been worse. Yeah, but could have been better. Absolutely. And especially for my resume, you know, so with that said, you know, I always, you know, worked these, you know, small jobs with minimal pay at these small companies where, you know, I was working, you know, 12, 14 hour days and honestly it sucked. It fucking sucked. But the gift of it was when I decided to open my business, I was like, you know what? At the very least, I'm working less. I'm doing what I love. I'm making a difference in people's lives. And I at least have to make as much as I was making in these shitty jobs, <laughs> if not eventually more, because it just has to be like that. And it did not happen overnight. It was about two and a half years into it that I really, you know, became fully independent. I'll put it that way. You know, no more roommate and, you know, no more, you know, worrying about like, oh my God, can I eat and stuff like that, you know? And, but about two and a half years and I kept at it because of my why because I knew that I was making a difference in people's lives, because I knew this was my soul's calling, because I fucking cared about the people that I was teaching. You know, I always thought about me pre-yoga, pre-business, and how miserable I was, and how, you know, checked out I was, and how I was looking for an answer, and knowing that that still exists, right? And there are people suffering, and they're, they're praying to find what it is that I'm teaching to like be that solution in their life is what kept me going, you know, admits the struggle, admits the hardship, admits everything that's a part of, you know, being someone who decides to pursue their calling full time. And so seven years later, five years into it actually being a studio, it's beautiful studio here in Columbus, Ohio, and we have well over a hundred members. I have eight teachers. I, uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful space that is growing and evolving. And I'm so excited that, you know, I, I still have this opportunity to positively impact the people that walk through that door and the community is one that's very inclusive. So, you know, one thing that I wanted to um, really create was an inclusive community, one where if you were overweight, if you felt like you were too old, if you felt like you couldn't do it, it's like, great, you can do it here, come to class here, you know? Um, and also like really no matter your age, your size or whatever, right? Like, cause those things don't matter anyways. But teaching yoga, I, I hear a lot from my clients and those are the things that they couldn't get self-conscious about. So it's a really beautiful, warm community and I'm excited to share more with you guys, you know, really kind of behind the scenes view of the studio and the things that have gone into it, especially those of you that don't come to class or have never been into the studio because maybe you live like in, you know, Washington DC and you're seeing this or something, but so excited to share this with you guys. And I'll be sharing just more overall with, you know, all of my businesses. But first, I want to introduce you to my first baby, which is Love Yoga Flow. And I'm just going to put the link below the video uh, to the site. You guys can get a feel, a vibe for it. But yeah, yoga, yoga. Sometimes things are just so innately a part of you that you forget, right? And so my question for you guys is, what's something that made has made such a difference in your life that has become such a part of you? that if you actually talked about more, would positively impact the people around you. So what is that? Share with me, I'd love to hear, put it in the comments. And of course, if you guys vibe with this, you know what to do. Subscribe, like, share it out, all that good stuff. 